marteau, mais je pense qu'il peut faire de grandes choses. Five years ago, world leaders signed the Paris Agreement, and they promised to keep the global average temperature rise to well below 2 degrees Celsius and to pursue 1.5 degrees to safeguard future living conditions. Since then, a lot has happened. But the action needed is still nowhere in sight. The gap between what we need to do and what is actually being done is widening by the minute. We are still speeding in the wrong direction. The five years following the Paris Agreement have been the five hottest years ever recorded. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is the money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. لحظة فالأمر ليس بهذه السهولة العالم اليوم أمام خيارين من أجل إنقاذ الكوكب من الدمار الناتج عن التلوث إما أن نضحي بعجلة الاقتصاد وما توفره من مال ووظائف ورفاهية لسكان العالم أجمع وإما أن نجد مصدرا جديدا وافرا يزود العالم باحتياجاته من الطاقة التي يمكننا تخزينها إلى وقت طويل من دون أي انبعاثات كربونية ضارة الخيار الأول لا يبدو صائبا أما الثاني فيبدو كحلم خيالي بعيد المنال إلى أن يتحقق Down here on Earth, in close to the sun, where it's warm uh, the, the hydrogen is almost entirely in the form of water So when hydrogen and oxygen get together chemically they form H2O, that's water Green hydrogen is nothing new It is simply to convert water via electrolysis in hydrogen and oxygen. We even know it from small experiments in school. It is very versatile as an energy carrier. You can store long term, like for example seasonal, and you can convert to other form of green molecules like ammonia, like methanol. And this is why some call it as a missing piece or even as a rock star of the energy transition. So the total investment of the big Neom Helios project is around 5 billion US dollar, which is 22 billion SAR. Um, the NEOM share of the investment is about 30%. The other two parties who are co-investing is Air Products and Aquapower. Um, it sounds big, it is big, but we're getting a lot for that. We're getting the biggest green hydrogen plant on the planet. We're getting about 650 tons of green hydrogen per day. We're getting 1.2 million tons of green ammonia a year. And we're firing that with green electricity coming from uh, 4 gigawatt of solar PV and wind generation. So the hydrogen and the ammonia which we are going to produce is virgin green. الهيدروجين الأخضر هل هو مجرد صيحة جديدة في عالم الطاقة أم أنه فعلا الحل السحري لتحديات صناعة الطاقة؟ Thing about hydrogen that's different than solar or wind is that it can be stored. You can put it on the shelf and use it later. With the sun, not so much, right? The sun is either up or it's down. And if it's down, too bad, right? You can't turn on the lights. But if, if during the day you use the sunshine to take hydrogen out of water, then at night you can put it back in and get the energy from the sun at night. Green hydrogen could potentially be produced at a cost well below $2 per kilogram in the region 
in Neom in Saudi Arabia, uh, potentially even when uh, this big project will be operational at around 1.5 uh, US dollars per kilogram. And uh, well, this is with uh, a very low cost of renewable energy of solar close to one cent and wind uh, between one and a half and two cents. And this makes this low cost. We want to create a first mover advantage in the market. We want to be the first. We want to shape and create the market. So we are wanna setting the pace. Um, and there's much more in it for Neom and the kingdom. It has a lot of collateral benefits. So it's a huge investment, yes, but we are creating a lot of GDP for Neom. We're creating around 1,000 jobs around the plant and we're creating potential to localize manufacturing of solar modules, of wind turbines, things like that. حتى الآن يبدو الهيدروجين الأخضر خيارا ممتازا لكن هل يخلو هذا الحل السحري من التحديات؟ Right, so a hundred years ago, my grandparents' generation uh, decided that they wanted to uh, retrofit all of the cities in the world with indoor plumbing. And they did it in one generation, right? Imagine what it would cost to dig up every street in Dubai and London and Paris and New York and lay sewer pipes and put in hot and cold running water 20 stories up the, the tenement buildings and put in toilets and sinks and showers. Just the labor alone would, would be cripplingly expensive. But they did that. And they didn't destroy the economy doing that. They built the world economy by doing that. And now we have toilets and sinks and showers. It's a wonderful thing. And this is exactly why we are doing ammonia. Ammonia is a very unique carrier. You can transport ammonia today already. It's a commodity market. And so we choose ammonia because it's easy to transport. You have the infrastructure and you can split ammonia again into hydrogen and, and nitrogen. على المدى القصير لا يخلو الأمر من التحديات لكن إن تحلينا ببعض النظر قد نتمكن من الإبقاء على عجلة الاقتصاد من دون المساس بصحة الكوكب السؤال هنا هل نمتلك الجرأة للتغيير؟ We're going to put in an economy that will not ruin the world that will create all the opportunity for our children and our grandchildren and we're going to be okay